on this episode, clear, unfiltered criticism. Mm. I said clear, unfiltered criticism. I don't like that it's circling. All right, now do it better. Here's a bit of a smart piece of code. Oh, hi, everybody. This is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to episode 74 of our advanced shmup tutorial. We are in the middle of doing the last sweeping changes to our game. We did a workflow test. Now we have some insights. We're trying to put those insights into action. I'm reminding myself what, what was happening there. I, I took a bit of a break recording those videos, so I... Okay, so um, I think uh, let, let's go to Couch Map and see what's going on here. All right. Enemy over, uh, do enemy overhaul is something that, that we have to do. Uh, enemy go to location command is something that you also have to do. Uh, and we have to also do the ground enemies kind of stuff. This is kind of like a new thing that, that I was thinking about. So these, strings are, these three things are maybe uh, something that we're gonna do today. Uh, let me start uh, with these two things because those two things are things that are gonna happen in the brain editor mainly. Right, uh, we can delete all of these. Yeah, position go to is something that we still have to do. How do I fire multiple bullets? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I haven't thought about this. Okay, let's let's. Never mind. Never mind. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of an overhaul of the do enemy function. Let me let me show you what I mean. Here is where we are actually executing all of our uh, well, not executing brain commands. Brain commands is uh, is something that is done done here where we're doing the do brain. Here the brain commands are translated into values for the enemies, like target values for animation and so forth. And in the do enemy function is where we actually execute. Um, you know, when we actually animate the enemy, when we move it around, when we ch make it change speed and so forth, when we actually move it on the screen. Uh, and I want to do a bit of overhaul here because there's a bunch of stuff here that I... Mm. Uh, one thing is that, you know, do we have like the whole this bunch, like 69 tokens. <laughs> That's not Palpatine. Um, we have 69 tokens. Uh, just dedicated to like the follow command and we're not actually using the follow command right now. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm already kind of like questioning this, this segment here. And the other reason why I was kind of like curious about maybe getting into this is we have like those two blocks here. This is where we animate the speed and this is where we animate the direction. Both of these are 32 tokens long. They are the same. They are literally the same. Hmm. So maybe we can turn it into one. Now we, I don't think we might be able to turn it into one, but uh, I think uh, one cool idea for the overhaul is to make it so that this follow thing where we are trying to follow the, the player, where that is not done here in like its separate little side thing, where we kind of roll this uh, into how we animate our direction uh, regularly. Here's what I what I mean. Uh, here we calculate the angle between the, the the enemy and the player, and we do shenanigans, and then we animate the angle of the of the enemy, like the movement angle of the enemy, to match that the target angle. And we do the same thing here, except here the angle doesn't come from these calculations. The angle is actually something that comes from the from the brain processing from the script. So we're animating the angle of the movement twice. And I, I don't know, I, it seems to me like it would make sense that, that we just here, that we would just set, calculate the angle where the player is, set that as our target and do the animation of the angle just together with the regular animation of the angle, right? So I'm thinking of, of merging those two. And the other thing is what I, what I noticed is there, here's a bit of a smart piece of code. I'm, I'm, hmm, I kind of like this piece of code here. So I'm taking the angle that, that the, the enemy is moving at. I'm adding something to that angle. And the thing I'm adding to that angle is mid, the mid function. And I'm taking the minus animation speed and plus animation speed and the difference 
and we, I'm choosing the middle value from those two, those three extremes or those two values. And, and that's a kind of like smart way of doing this. First of all, it's actually like um, plus and minus agnostic, right? So if I set a speed at which something should animate, it doesn't matter what kind of sign it has. Uh, it will just it will be the absolute value of that speed. So if I say I want to change the angle at 0 0.1 per, per frame or minus 0 0.1 per frame, it's going to be the same. That's kind of nice. That's the first cool feature of this, this thing that I kind of like because of the angles. It's kind of like, you know, you can rotate this around, this way around or that way around to arrive at the target. It doesn't really matter. That's nice. The other reason why I like this piece of code is that it automatically, it will automatically arrive at the target value. It won't overshoot. And that's cool because you see down here, we have like this whole huge if statement to make sure it doesn't overshoot. Like that's like just 14 tokens just to make sure it doesn't overshoot. And here we do it all in one line. That's kind of nice. And I, I kind of stumbled over this and I'm kind of proud of this. This is cool. This is this is something that yet you might also want to steal. <laughs> I like this. Let's let's try to use this down there. And there is also another reason. I'm sorry, this is a long preamble. There's another reason why I want to do the rewrite a little bit as well. And that is um, while animating some of the enemies, I noticed that sometimes I get into those problems where I end up animating the direction the wrong speed and it circles a little bit, like the enemy starts circling around. And I want to rewrite this in a way that it never actually happens, that it always, the enemy will always automatically find the shortest, the shortest round to the target. So if I say like, you know, animate one degree to the left, but I set the speed to the other direction, that it will actually go to the left, you know, it will actually go to the, um, to the, it will take the shortest route to arrive at the target direction, target heading. Now we will lose some control over that. We can't make the, the enemy spin around a couple of times with the, with easy code. You have to add more code to make the enemy spin around. But also, I don't think we're going to need to make the enemy spin around a lot. It's actually better to prevent the, a lot of spinning around and make the code a lot, like the, the scripting of the stuff, a lot more lenient. Sorry, long preamble. Let's let's get started with this. So I want to take this. This is going to be the, the key to, to my rewriting. And I'm going to rewrite this. And actually later on, I'm also probably going to rewrite speed using this code because I like this code. Uh, but first, let us let us bring it in here and let us adapt this. So right now we are adding uh, an ADRS. That's the speed at which the angle is being animated. And I just want to uh, replace this here, this minus uh, e.flws, that's a different variable, and plus, right? So these are just a maximum and like the minimum and maximum speed at which the angle will change. And because we have like a minus and positive, like minus and plus, um, we kind of like define the maximum speed at which the angle will change. And it doesn't matter what sign the speed had. We take the absolute value of that speed. And then here we're taking like the actual difference between target and and the current angle. And that's gonna be this. And that's it. Now thinking a little bit. Yeah, that's it. And so that speed that code means that we can remove this. And it means that also we can remove this if statement here. This if statement can be a lot easier now. You can just go if uh, e.ang, if that equals, if we arrive at our target angle, and we can remove those ABS, ABS stuff. It's gonna get a lot easier. And then we don't even have to, we don't even have to reset you know, we have, don't even have to set the angle to the target. We previously want to make sure that it actually snaps to the, to the target because we might overshoot, we might not quite hit it, you know. But no, now it's, it's, it's will happen automatically thanks to that one line. Uh, and then we can just remove this. There is a chance we can probably also turn this into ternary. Ternary, ternary. Um, let's think about this later. All right, so now that we wrote this, we might also re let's, let's just first see if this works, by the way. Let's take a thing that's rot rot rotating. Yeah, it works, it still works. 
Uh, let us use the same thing because this is allowed 30 tokens. Previously it was 32 tokens. We save two tokens like this. That's nice. Uh, so we can save two more tokens using this um, same uh, same code for the animation speed. Uh, for how we animate the speed. So we're going to do SPD here. Uh, we're going to do SPD here. Oops. Um, we're going to go ace, uh, this, the target here, a SPDT, that's the target of the speed animation. And here, uh, that's going to be a SPS. And again, same, same, same idea. This if statement gets a lot easier now. And and yeah, and yeah, this is get speed. This is a SPT. Boom, save two tokens, cool. And yeah, it seems like it's the, anim the animation is happening. Yep, yeah, it stopped and it accelerated again. So again, the animation works correctly now. And because of the way we wrote this now, it's agnostic of the, of the, um, of the sign in front of the speed. So when we when we animate something, it doesn't really matter if it's minus or plus. It will always arrive at target value. Nice. Now let me let me um, create a brain that demonstrates an issue that I still have. Uh, animate direction, and let's set it to one. And let's go zero point one. Oh, let's go zero point zero one. You see, you see how it's circling. I don't like that it's circling. I don't like that it's circling right now because heading zero is the same as heading one, right? We understand that, right? So if you have a circle here, right? This is going to be zero, but also one and also two and so forth. This is 0 0.5, but also uh, 1.5 or minus 0 0.5, right? The different angle values kind of like loop around, right? So uh, you, if you like, if you go more than 360 degrees, you arrive at, at the, the place where you started out at. And I kind of want to, again, I want to always for the ships to, um, to automatically uh, find the shortest route to the target. And the reason being that uh, I want to use this code, this rotation code, rotation animation code. I want to use that to follow the player. So you see how I'm animating from zero to 0 0.6. Um, but the um, the ship takes kind of like the long way around. It it goes like in the wrong direction. It would be better if it would rotate to the right here, but it instead it wants to kind of rotate uh, clockwise, and it takes a longer route to get to that that angle. And this is going to be a problem if the ship is auto following, like the enemy is auto following the player's ship because it will take like loops when it shouldn't take a loop. Now, so what I want to do here is I want the ship to rotate the other way around to always find the shortest route to the target heading. All right, so this is our test. Now we have to figure out how to do this. In this case, it's kind of like simple. Uh, we kind of like want to see that's the route that we want the enemy to be taking. It's 0 0.6 is kind of like the same as minus 0 0.4. So I want to translate 0 0.6 to 0 0.4 to minus 0 0.4. And there is like a simple check which we can use to find out if we, the route that we are currently taking is the long route. And that check is basically saying, if we take more than 180 degrees, if the route that we're trying to animate is more than 100, like the swing that we're trying to animate is more than 180 degrees, then we are for sure taking the long way around and for sure there is a shorter way. It makes sense, right? If you go 130 degrees, you turn backwards or turn around backwards. If you turn more around than just backwards, then you could just go the other way around much faster. So the check is something like this. So this is the check that I'm trying to implement here. So we're going to go if I have a bit of a cheat here. So E dot A D R T when the destination minus the, the E dot ang. If this, oh, M -g, N -g, if this is greater than 0 0.5, then, right? So now we found out that the distance that we're trying to, to cross is greater than 0 0.5, which means probably we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we can find an, a faster way. And in fact, like this difference here that we're calculating here, this difference, that's the same thing as this difference here, right? That's the same code. So something we could do here 
is we could just change the, de the destination. We can change the um, target value. So we're going to do something like e.adrt uh, minus equal 0.5, right? We just like subtract 0.5 from that. So we subtract 180 degrees from that and that might arrive, let us arrive at a short route. Let's see if this works. My, it probably won't work. There's, there's, it's a bit more complicated. Oh, okay, zero point, let's go 0 0.6. Hmm, oh right, not 0 0.5, one. We, go, we have to subtract a whole rotation. See, now it takes a shorter route. We seem to be done. Not quite though, because now if we, t if we make z z minus 0 0.6, it is, you can see it takes the longer route. It should take this route, 0 0.4. Like that's the way it should go. But instead it, it, uh, it went the long way around. And the reason for that is now we're turning in a different direction. So now sometimes this, you have to subtract one and sometimes you have to subtract minus one. It depends on which direction you were going in the first place. It, it's kind of like a sign issue here right now. So what we have to do is we have to sometimes subtract one and sometimes subtract minus one, depending on whether uh, the difference between target and current, um, current angle uh, was negative or positive. So actually what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're actually checking the absolute value between the difference. First of all, that's, that's an important one. And then when we're subtracting, we're going to take the sign of that. And yeah, this is a little bit, this is a little bit confusing. I, I admit this is a little bit, I arrived at this code with uh, some fumbling around and some brain power. This took some brain power to figure out, but I think it's, it's a good solution. I think it's a pretty compact solution to make the uh, the enemy always follow the shortest route to the target. So you can see now it took the shortest route. Let's make it uh, go in the other direction, took the shortest route. Now let's go minus negative, shortest route, negative, positive, shortest route. And if we take like some crazy high value, it will still take the shortest route. It won't spin a couple of times around to arrive at the, you know, multiple rotation kind of thing. It will shorten everything to just one rotation. All right. So we have like this very flexible um, rotation and very smart rotation animation now. But of course, now we broke it. Now this animation of the angle is very different from the animation of the speed. So now maybe it doesn't make sense to merge these into one function, but we can now simplify this. We can get rid of all of this stuff. That's kind of nice. So um, let, let me see. We don't need this, for example, anymore. We kind of did, we don't need this anymore. We do need a distance check, but we don't need this e either, right? All this stuff can be so much simpler. And this diff that we're calculating here, that diff doesn't even need to be there. All we need to do is we're gonna hijack this animation for the direction. So if, if we are following the enemy, we're gonna set the target direction to calculation of the distance. And we don't need to subtract the angle at the end. So just like we're gonna calculate at which, where the enemy is supposed to go to, um, to fly towards the player. And then we're gonna set this as a target for our animation. And that's it. And then uh, here's the distance check. That's good. I think we can write it a little bit more compact. Um, but now in the brain, when I set when I set the follow, instead of having like the special variable that that tracks the following speed, I'm actually now reusing the system that animates the direction of the heading of the of the enemy. And so I can now um, go ADRS. I can dump uh, parameter one into ADRS. That's how fast the enemy would be following the, the player. So now we're completely hijacking this other system. Easy. Okay, let's see if this works. Yep, it's following me and it's going. Yeah. And yeah, if I go around, ooh, there's there's a bit of a there's a bit of a funky thing happening. What what is why is this happening? 
let's make the animation really oh wait let's make it like this let's make the animation really really slow oh okay that's good now we we'll just change direction uh, and because we are animating it very fast the animation di direction change went very fast but actually it's fine okay cool working uh, there's one last thing that I want to maybe do here, and that is when the distance uh, reaches a certain threshold, um, we want to turn off the following, right? So, um, like the following function. So I want to maybe do this without the if statement. I will just like do like a flat assignment, something like FLW equals um, a distance greater than, than 25. Right? So if it's greater than the distance is greater, then following will be set to true. And if the distance gets shorter, then following will be set to false. And in which case, we're no longer tracking the player. Now we're just animating it to the last position. All right, this works. It's following, it's following. Now it's no longer following. Easy. All right, so let us now move on to the second goal that we had. So we have the position go to. That's something I wanted to do now. Um, so this is going to be a new command. Let's call it maybe mov, move, right? Move seems good, Moth, let's call it Moth. Uh, and then here in the brain, so here we're gonna do else if cmd equals Moth, then. Okay, so we're gonna go e dot Moth x equals uh, par one and e dot Moth y equals Part two. It's like a very simple function here, I think. We're basically setting like, okay, I want to put this sprite, this this enemy at this screen position. Then the question is, uh, how we're gonna do this? Like, if there's a target that we that we want to move the enemy to, then I think it shouldn't move otherwise, because then it might always move away from the position and we might move it back to the position. Like, it seems like uh, those two are competing ideas of how we move and animate the enemy. Um, so let's do something like if moth x then else else we do the normal animation. Uh, in fact, we're not even gonna move use s x and s y. It's gonna be a whole different way of moving the enemy. Yeah, and even this, we're not even gonna calculate this, the distance at which we are moving. Yeah, all this stuff, all this stuff. This is a, just a different way of moving the, the player, the enemy. Is is what I'm thinking. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Right. So if there's a moth, moth x, then we're gonna do something like we're gonna do our our favorite equation here. E dot x plus equals e dot moth x minus e dot x divided by twenty five. Right. And we're gonna do the same thing to y. Something like this. Let's try this. Let's do our test uh, enemy here. We don't no longer need that fluv. Uh, now we're gonna do a moth. Yeah, to zero. Let's let's go the moth to 64, 128. Let's make it move to the bottom of the screen. Okay, it's uh, down there. Now the problem is it's no longer moving. It's no longer moving. It never stops. It, it Now it moves to that position, and even if it arrives at position, it, it doesn't stop. So now let us maybe just calculate the distance between where we were supposed to go and where we are. And if that distance gets close enough, then we're just gonna uh, call it quits. So we're gonna go if the distance between e dot x and e dot y and mof x and mof y, if that's smaller, then like one, then e dot x equals e dot moth x e dot y equals e dot moth y and e dot moth moth x equals nil. 
Um, there might be there might be an easy way of doing this. We might do it also linearly. In fact, that might be a good idea to do it in linearly. Uh, but let's try this for now. It's still no dot moving. Let's make it smaller than ten. Maybe it's a rounding error. Yeah, it snapped to the position, but it didn't stop moving. Oh, both X. There we go. Okay. Um, it's, it continues moving, but now I want it to not to snap as vigorously. Hmm. A little bit sudden, I would say. But I mean, the speed is really high, so. So how much tokens does this cost? 50 tokens, that's a lot. I mean, we can do some, we can do some simplification here. Like this, right? Yeah, so I reckon there's a way of saving around 15 tokens if we, uh, uh, because right now this is like this nice, you know, this nice uh, acceleration happening here. There is like this nice easing happening here, which I like. This this easing function, it's kind of nice. Um, but there's a way of doing this um, a lot more, a lot more cheaper in, in terms of tokens if you just use linear movement. Um, I'm gonna keep this around for now. It's I think it's okay. Uh, we're gonna see if those we need ever need those tokens. This is maybe a bit too fast. Let's let's keep it at 25. The problem is also we're moving the this this poor we're moving this poor uh, enemy very fa very quickly <laughs> a very far away. I mean, so if you move it a little bit closer, yeah, it will always take the same amount of time to move the enemy to the to this target. So it's a little predictable, but it also means that if the enemy is already close to his destination, it will kind of like stay around for a, for for a while. It can will kind of hover, and that might not be ideal. But let's just like we have a system in place, and let's see how the system works when we start actually making enemies with that. I, for now, I mark it with a little star here that there is potential here to make this a little bit more compact and work differently. All right, and now there's one last thing to do, and that is bring all these new features back into Couchmap. And I'm gonna actually fast forward this part because it's just copy and paste, so bear with me. Seems like it worked. Uh, so this part is over. We're gonna save this and we're gonna think about what uh, are the things that we're gonna do next. So we do did uh, do enemy overhaul. Uh, we did an enemy go to location. Next up, there's two things that I want to do next. Now one is ground enemies. That is something that that is a new thing. That's something that we have to do on the uh, enemy editor and a little bit on the uh, on the brain editor. It kind of like do two editors that we need to address there. Uh, and the other thing that I want to do is there's some pattern work that we need to do. So pattern, um, we wanted to do bullet speed manipulation and then there's some merging that we have, can do here. Okay, but let's do these things on the next episode. For now, I want to say the things that I say at the end of each episode. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for supporting this show on coffee.com. People are supporting this show on coffee.com. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for making this show possible. And also I have a comment from the Gecko saying, I'm going through video 60. Is there a deeper reason later on to give bulls an X and Y of zero and then plus equals the location to where the enemy is? Seems like you could just remove X and Y from establishment and just set bull X and bull Y to enemy X and enemy Y where in firing the pattern. That is absolutely correct, the Gecko. Beautiful <laughs> observation there, yeah, I did. There's some, some inefficiencies going on there. 
uh, we might go there when we add the f like we might rework this part when we actually think about you know how to fire uh, bullets from different positions but that's something that we're gonna have to tackle in a different episode but yeah thank you so much for reminding me absolutely something that i'm gonna look into all right next episode two big things ground enemies and a little bit of pattern work see you next time around guys bye bye